Chapter 12 <laughs> Soul and Demonic Ties, Soul Travel, and Related. We will have scripture, as always, general thoughts and beliefs, as according to the Bible. And then we're going to go into some interesting things, people. Uh, God's system, inanimate objects, sex with demons. Oof, I don't want to discuss that, but we need to. Spirit, soul, and body. I'm talking about the travel and everything about it. Soul ties, what that is, exactly what it is. Godly soul ties, because God does want us to have soul ties. Fornication and adultery, woo -hoo. homosexuality, bestiality, curses, witchcraft, bans, covenants, brotherhoods, yoke of bondage, spiritual strength, mind and force, types of categories, and finally, the references. All right, we're going to get started with the scripture. I can't believe this truck going to do this while I'm trying to read. My neighbor is like, been so quiet all the way till I started to record. So I guess I have to record between 1 and 3. It's 3 now. So scripture. <clears throat> Again, scripture. Soul ties. One flesh. Genesis 2.24 says, You shall cleave to your wife. That must mean a husband. And they shall be one flesh. I guess that's what a godly soul tie is. We're going to find out. Matthew 19.6 says, What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. 1 Corinthians 6.16 6, says, What? Know ye not that what's joined to an harlot is one body? Soul ties uh, regarding witchcraft. Leviticus 19 and Leviticus 20. Look those chapters up. Regard not that you have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards. Ooh, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off. You don't want God to cut you off. I don't. That's, that's pretty intense when he cuts you off. Curses. Bondage. These books are Numbers, Deuteronomy, Job, Acts, and Galatians. Now, I'll give you the chapters, but do the research so it's more fun. Numbers 5, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 30, Job 2, Acts 2, Acts 23, not Acts 2, Acts 23, and Galatians 3. So I'll read the verses, but you find them. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. Mm. A priest can charge someone and curse someone, especially if they're called to be a priest. Not the Catholic priest we're talking about. We're talking about the priest in the Christian biblical sense. Put a yoke or iron upon their neck, and they will have destroyed. Mm. Put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Wow. And uh, Deuteronomy talks about, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. In Job, it says, Dost thou not still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. You know, that was his wife that said that to him. It's crazy. Acts 23 says, A certain of Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse. That is really sad to get with people. And that's like those sororities and fraternities and, you know, other groups. It's too many to name. Like, um... The Lions, what do you call those people? These different organizations that take pledges and stuff with each other. That's a coven, and that's against what God says. Even pledging allegiance to the flag, we have to be um, making sure that we are talking about the God of heaven. Because if it's another God, we're pledging a wrong type of allegiance. Um, Acts 23 says we have bound ourselves under a great curse. It's like pledging to some flag. Like, just think about the people in Haiti. If they pledge to their flag, that place was dedicated to Satan. Ditto. Dum, da -dum, dum. Galatians 3 talks about, For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. Galatians 3. So, if you're working your works to get saved or whatever, or to get good with God and all that, it's just a curse you're putting on yourself because that's not how it goes. 
you accept XX. You accept salvation as a free gift. So it's not by works. This is the bands and bondage that these soul ties can cause. Leviticus 26 says, And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Judas, Judas, <laughs> Jude 15 says, And this band loose from his hands. Job 38 says, Or I loose the bands of Orion. That is a false god, Orion. Got to read about that one. Job 39 says, Or he who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass. That's bestiality, right? Job 39 again, Come, canst thou bind the unicorn with the band of his furrow? Hmm. Do a good Bible study on unicorn. It's a very strong, fierce animal that God created. It's not a fictional fairy tale animal. Uh, Psalm 2 says, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Okay, we don't want ungodly ties. Psalm 58 says, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. That hurt. Psalm 73 says, for there are no bands in their death. Psalm 107, and break their bands in sunder. So the Bible is all about breaking ties and bands with people, bounds and bondages with them. Psalm 119 says, The bands of the wicked have robbed me. Mm, Jesus, help us with that one. Proverbs 6 says, Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. Mm, that's the commandments of the law, of the word. That's what he wants us to bind continually to us. So if we want to bind anything to us, it should be the word of God, the law of God, not any person, not any covenant with someone else, even your country. Ecclesiastes 7 says, The woman whose heart ensnares and nets and her hands as bands. You see? That's not good. Isaiah 28 says, Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. No mocking God, because you will be bound strong to that thing which you're mocking. Isaiah 52 says, Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive, something is running. I gotta wait. Mm. Is that somebody running water? Loose thyself from bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Isaiah 58 says, To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. Ezekiel 4, And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee. Daniel 4, And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee. Okay, that was Daniel 4. Daniel 4 says, leave a stump on the roots of the earth with a band of iron and brass. Daniel 4 actually says, Daniel 4, leave stump of his roots in the earth with bands of iron and brass. That's a godly tie. Hosea 11, drew them with cords of a man with bands of love. Hmm. Zechariah 11, the one I call beauty and the other I call bands. Uh, again in Zechariah 11, then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands. Luke 8, he was kept bound with chains and in fetters he break the bands. Colossians 2, from that, oops, from which all the body and joints and bands are knit together. Well, and knit together. I gotta do that again. Colossians 2. From which all the body by joints and bands and knit together. You're like, what does all of that mean? We're getting ready to go over it. Generally speaking, there are invisible ties between human beings. Amen? Remember all the movies you see about twins? Meet up with a twin later or triplets? Or your parents, you meet up with the person, you have a soul tie. So even if you haven't met the person, you'll know them in your spirit, in your soul. 
rather. Anyway, I need to cut out that comment. There are invisible ties between human beings, alive and alive, alive and dead, which we don't want those, between human beings and spiritual beings, between human beings and animals. There are demonic ties, there are soul ties, there are ties of curses, ties of witchcraft, and ties of bands and bondage. So let's go over that again. Erase all of that before that, Julia. Generally speaking, there are invisible ties between human beings, alive and alive, alive and dead, between human beings and spiritual beings, between human beings and animals. There are domestic ties, soul ties, ties of curses, witchcraft ties, and ties of bands or bondage. Most Christians do not believe that demons control any part of their lives. If they only knew how much they would be, <laughs> if they only knew how much they would be aghast and would begin to take action against the forces of darkness. I spend my time primarily studying what happens to people when they do not obey the law of God. I, again, a car is coming. Oh, it's an airplane. I study God's laws of justice. Most people want to study God's law of love. The law of justice equally balances the law of love. Amen. Do you feel as if there's something that ties you to another or as if there is pressure around your body? Think about ties to men, ties to women, ties to animals, both dead and alive, inanimate and also demons. You know, we don't want those ties. This is God's system. We believe that God has set up an invisible system of ties, which we cannot see, but we feel the results of these ties. We are knit together with God and his body. That's the body of Christ. We are also knit together with others and by demonic forces. The impression that we have is that there are good ties with God and bad ties with the forces of evil. You could visualize being tied up, bound up in chains and fetters, tied to others, weighed down, under pressure, etc. You are either tied to others or tied up within yourself. You are carrying heavy loads on your shoulders or within your body. And you can feel these, remember he said. Let's talk about inanimate objects. If you have a cursed object in your house, you are cursed. Now, in other book, um, now in the complete deliverance manual, it'll explain to you if there is an item in your house or in your car and you don't own it and you cannot get rid of it because the adult that owns it says, no, I'm not getting rid of it. Well, you do have the right to do an exorcism over that object. So you can do that. Exercise objects, do deliverance with people. So a cursed object is not just sitting idle in your house. It will cause trouble. It will draw demonic forces. There are demons that live in and around a cursed object. So do you feel an unusual attraction? Or do you feel an unusual repulsion? to some object in your home, in your office, or in your car. It may have a demon tied to it. So definitely do the exorcism of it. Exercise that object and put the seven spirits of God on it. Kill, keep, kick, kick away, get rid of whatever's on it because it will cause problems in your family or in your home. Some friends of ours were ministers who went to, ooh, who went to Haiti. Some friends of ours were ministers who went to Haiti. And if you don't know this, Haiti was dedicated to Satan so long ago. They need to really get, deal with that. One time they bought us some carved figurines as a gift. This is the apostles, Jean and Earlene Moody. The statues caused strife in our family. Our daughter Marie felt like there were eyes watching her as she walked across the room. The Lord finally got our attention. As we destroyed the wooden figures, the wood would not even burn normally. Finally, we had to soak them in charcoal lighter fluid. When they finally burned, 
A green flame came out and shot toward us. These dolls were probably made of voodoo. Um, what do you call it? Probably made of voodoo worshippers who blessed them like they did chants and incantations over the dolls so that they would be sold. And whoever they got sold to, those demons went with them into the home of the people that bought them. So after getting rid of these statues, the strife immediately left their family. Moving on, sex with demons. Okay, There are demons that have sex with humans, with or without your permission. Uh, but once you give them permission, you have some work to do. Um, they are worshippers of, of voodoo. If you're into voodoo, you can invite demons to have sex with you doing a rite, R-I-T-E. These demons are called incubus for women and succubus for men. It may be possible to form a soul tie with a demon, especially once they have sex with you. And they will do it while you're asleep. Yep, been there. Gotta really work on that one. Ooh, just gross demons doing that. In the spirit, soul, and body, the human being is composed of eternal spirit, intellectual soul, and a fleshly body. So God imparted a spirit into the womb of the woman and man, you know, during your conception, a spirit of life was imparted to you, which is God's spirit. The soul is normally thought of as mind, will, and emotions. The soul and body grow as we develop as humans. We, when we die, God will take our spirit and soul into the spiritual world leaving our flesh body behind. Okay? So, that's why when we tell people that person is not in that graveyard, it's the truth. Their soul and spirit has left their body. Their body is just going to become dirt again. We recognize each other when we go to heaven because we will have our souls, which contain the memory, will, and emotion. So, you're going to know who, who's who in heaven because their soul came with their spirit. An animal is composed of a soul, a body, but no spirit. When an animal dies, there's no indication in the Bible that God preserves any part of that animal, then that earthly animal will be found in heaven. There are heavenly animals, though, that are there now, such as horses and the other ones you'll see when you arrive. Demons have a spirit and soul, but do not have a body. And so do those characters that got kicked out of heaven with Satan. They do a lot of work down here. Soul ties. Soul ties are simply becoming one flesh, according to the Bible. The soul is united. And the soul is tied. It's an invisible tie between live humans, live humans and dead humans, live humans and animals. <coughs> Soul ties between live humans would include a husband and wife, a man and a whore, a woman and a gigolo, a man and a man, a woman and a woman. Soul ties between humans and animals would include sex with animals by men or women. No, soul ties between live humans and dead humans would include any ability to give up the dead and influence of the dead on the living. Ooh, that's ugly. Have you been married before and divorced or separated? Well, it is your former mate that will have a soul tie with you if they're not dead. Well, you still have to break the soul tie if they're dead. If you have a soul tie with that person because you were married, it has to be broken unless you plan to reunite with that person after a temporary separation. So if you're only separated and you want to get back together, do not denounce or renounce the soul tie yet. But do that if you don't want to be. Godly soul ties. There is a good soul tie between godly married mates. Godly married mates. That's a good soul tie. That was established by God as one of his laws. Apostle Erlene and his wife Ur <laughs> Apostle Moody and his wife Erlene have a godly soul tie. This was in our marriage only. Now we did not have any other former mates. That's beautiful. We were one flesh. We became one flesh when we united in sex. Marriage in the Bible is consummated when a couple comes together sexually. They simply went to their tent 
they had sex, were married in the sight of God. There is no need for paperwork or formalities in the sight of God. These are needed for man's world. Hallelujah. So let me... All right, let's go over fornication and adultery. Get away from your truck. Fornication is all sexual acts outside of godly marriage. That union of marriage is never fornication. Fornication would include sex between a man and a woman before marriage, even in the setting or consenting adults. Okay. Um, if you get with an adult or someone after you're married, it's a adultery. Most people think if they get married after the child is conceived, it's not illegitimate. But it is in the sight of God. The child is still a bastard. A soul tie is formed immediately upon the sexual act. God made the woman have a strong attraction to the first man that she had sex with. It's going to be very difficult for that woman to forget the first sexual partner. Even when she gets married to another man, she may want to go back to her first partner as she goes through life. Jesus is Lord. Adultery is ungodly sexual acts in marriage with another person. Adultery is also defined.